You know how you gotta constantly keep your computer updated with the latest software, and sometimes an update is not an update. It actually makes the software work worse or introduces other problems. Like here I am working with OBS Studio and it's reminding me that an update's available, but I'm gonna skip it for now because sometimes it just messes up the entire program when I need to get something out. Well, a similar thing has happened here to the Airbus A320 fleet of aircraft, specifically regarding their ELAC computers or elevator and aileron control computers, where an update was done, oh, probably around October of this year, and it omitted a couple of critical bits of software that caused a problem. And now we have this emergency airworthiness directive. Now, there's a lot of hoopla going on out there in the mainstream media about this, but the airlines are going to be able to get this addressed very quickly. This is simply a 30-minute fix of downloading the previous version of software back into the ELAC computers, testing those computers, and getting the aircraft back out on the line. So it's going to be of minimum disruption to the system. Now let's dive into what's an ELAC, what's this emergency AD, what's this all about? My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Let's check it out. Back on October 30th of this year, JetBlue Airbus A320, November 605 JetBlue, JB, Juliet Bravo, performing flight as JetBlue 1230 from Cancun to Newark, New Jersey, was en route at 350, about 70 nautical miles south, uh, west-southwest of Tampa, when the aircraft experienced an in-flight upset causing injuries to a number of people. The aircraft descended rapidly. Now, the upset only lasted for four seconds or so, but then the crew with the autopilot on, elected to descend the aircraft and divert on into Tampa. On November 7th, the NTSB reported that during cruise, the aircraft experienced an uncontrolled descent for about four to five seconds before the autopilot corrected the trajectory. So the, this entire event occurred with the autopilot on. This likely occurred during an ELAC sw switch change. So a switch from ELAC number one to ELAC number two. There are two of these elevator aileron control computers on board the Airbus A320. In fact, there's a total of seven flight control computers on board the Airbus. Remember the Airbus is a fly-by wire aircraft. Fly-by wire aircraft that's controlled with this little side stick controller. And yesterday on November 28th, Airbus released this alert operator's transmission and the FAA, a uh, emergency airworthiness AD, saying that Airbus A320 aircraft that were equipped with the ELAC B L104, L104 is the software version for that uh, ELAC computer, that those aircraft are grounded and they need to be replaced with the L103 version of software, which I believe is the previous version of software. Now, all of these fly-by-wire aircraft have software that helps protect these fly-by-wire aircraft from electromagnetic radiation, including atmospheric solar flares and that sort of thing. Apparently, as they switched from the L103 software to the L104 software, a few bits of code were omitted. <laughs> that bit of code, which contained the hardening for electromagnetic radiation, was omitted on the on the L104, the new version of the software, and that's what happened to the JetBlue flight. One of the ELACs suffered a bit flip where <laughs> when the, now this is computer stuff way beyond my, <laughs> way over the top of my head, but as best as I understand it, without the software to protect it from electromagnetic radiation and solar flares, that radiation did affect one of the ELACs caused a bit flip or a change, uh, apparently just switches zeros and ones, gets them backwards. That one ELAC, that one computer, that one redundant computer came up with a fault and that fault triggered the uh, computer to switch from ELAC one to ELAC two. So they think that it was somewhere in that switch of that fault from one ELAC to the other ELAC that this uncommanded pitch down moment occurred. So for now, the quick fix is to return to uh, software L103, the previous version of the software, which includes the software to harden the ELACs from electromagnetic radiation. 
And the AD allows uh, operators to ferry those aircraft to places where they can download that software and get it into the computer. Not every station has this, the downloading capability and the downloading software. They need it to get the aircraft to a station where they can perform this software changeover, get the equipment changed and get the aircraft back online. And that all that should take only about 30 minutes per airplane and much of the fleet has already been handled. Okay, now for <laughs> us aviation nerds, if you want to see me flail through a Airbus refresher course, it's been years since I've flown the Airbus. Fly-by-wire system, seven flight control computers right up here, <coughs> excuse me, on the overhead panel, ELAC number one, SEC number one, and FAC number two. And then over here on this side of the overhead panel, ELAC number two, SEC number two, SEC number three, and FAC number two. All right, these are the seven onboard in-flight computers that help run the fly-by-wire system of the Airbus A320. ELAC stands for Elevator Aileron Control Computers. SEC stands for Spoiler Elevator Control Computers. And FAC, or FAC1, stands for Flight Augmentation Computer, which deals with the rudder and yaw damping. All seven of these computers work together and with redundancy to ensure that the fly-by-wire system on the Airbus always works. And remember, too, the Airbus has three laws, basically four laws, flight control laws, normal law, alternate law, direct law, and then pure mechanical law. If everything goes to hell in an Airbus, you can theoretically still operate the aircraft by pitching with the manual pitch trim and rolling with the rudders. Those two systems still have mechanical cables uh, to operate the aircraft. And here on the ECAM display on the aircraft, you can see these on the flight control page, you can see these computers in action, ELAC number one and number two controlling the elevator and the ailerons. SEC 1, 2, and 3 controlling the spoilers, which in turn control rolling of the aircraft in conjunction with the ailerons, and elevator control. And then the flight augmentation computer deals with the rudder and yaw damping. Now the trick is how, what is the architecture of this uh, computerized flight control system and the hydraulics that power the flight controls? And this is a interesting deep dive into the redundancy of a modern airliner like the Air 3 A320. In the Airbus, you have three separate hydraulic systems. And of course, being Air Airbus, it has to be something different than left, center, and right. So it's green, blue, and yellow. And like with any of these modern airliners, any one of these single hydraulic systems provides enough power to continue to fly the aircraft. The green system comes primarily from the left engine driven hydraulic pump. The yellow system comes from the right engine hydraulic pump primarily. And the blue system comes from a separate electrically powered hydraulic pump. And there's also a ram air turbine or a rat available to provide emergency hydraulic power in the loss in the event of loss of all hydraulics or both engines. And here's how these two systems are blended together, or the architecture of the A320, ELAC-1 and ELAC-2. And here's the different hydraulic systems, blue, green, yellow, and the different flight controls. Spoilers, speed brakes, ailerons, uh, elevator, and stabilizer trim. And ELAC-1 controls only, or works only with the blue hydraulic system. And ELAC-2 works with the green and the yellow hydraulic system. So for example, on the ailerons, ELAC-1 is working with the blue hydraulic system. By the way, the ailerons are powered by a combination of blue and green hydraulics, thus the redundancy. But back here on the elevator, the elevator is such a critical component that it, it use, utilizes all three hydraulic systems. So any one of the three hydraulic systems can provide you elevator control. ELAC-1, again, only has uh, uses the blue side of the hydraulic system, but ELAC-2 uses a combination of the green and the yellow hydraulic systems. So you Airbus operators that look in the MEL and find out, uh, how come I can be dispatched with only one of the ELACs inoperative? 
this explains it. You have to have ELAC number two because it's got the redundancy of both the yellow and blue hydraulics, correction, the yellow and green hydraulic system. ELAC number one has only the blue hydraulic system. So if you were to lose ELAC one and the blue hydraulic system, you would temporarily lose pitch control until which time that the rat deployed. So in the case of the JetBlue flight, it was determined that it was ELAC number two that had the fault or the problem. And so the flight computer system automatically switched over to ELAC number one. But it was determined that it was ELAC number two that gave the uncommended pitch down during cruise flight with the autopilot on. So with all the mayhem going on in, out there in the media about the Airbus as being grounded, just know that it's a quick fix, a 30-minute fix for each aircraft if it has the affected ELAC and software combination that is affected by this Emergency Airworthiness, airworthiness Directive. And know that all of these aircraft, fly-by-wire aircraft, are properly hardened for electromagnetic radiation, including that from the atmosphere. It's just that this one software update apparently omitted it, and it did actually cause a problem. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.